This video is looking into what a deep approach might look like for a particular discipline. So what do we mean by a deep approach? Well, the work of Entwistle and colleagues um, in the late 1990s and early 2000s identified three main approaches to studying that a student might undertake. So there's a deep approach, which is seeking a broader meaning. It's immersing yourself in that subject. It's getting a, a broader idea, a broader understanding of that subject by reading around and learning as much as you can about that subject. On the other extreme of that is a surface approach, which is where you're reproducing content for a purpose. So you're learning something so that you can take a test in it, for example, or you're trying to cram information so that you can um, regurgitate that or respond with that in an exam or some sort of assessment nearby. So the idea of a surface approach is you're being quite specific about the activities that you are trying to undertake in order to cope with the course requirements. So a deep approach is a broad and intensive understanding of the subject through which the detailed information will come from that broad understanding. Surface approach is trying to remember specific ideas and concepts so that you can use those in some form of an assessment or some form of an activity. Then you have a strategic approach, which is essentially someone who is a very effective and organised learner who organises their studying, who plans, who is proactive, who thinks about things. And although they don't define a non-strategic approach, the absence of a strategic approach by default is someone who doesn't really plan their learning, who's a bit more spontaneous, who sort of reacts to the environment and to the needs that present themselves to them. So a key thing we need to think about when looking at the requirements of the discipline are what are the characteristics of a deep approach within that discipline. A deep approach is the ability to be discerning and use strategies and the ability to use them well in a contextual environment. You need to understand that subject for yourself and there's sensitivity to context within that. So you understand how that discipline works under different environments or in different contexts or different positions. A deep approach is also the ability to utilise networks of support and networks for finding out information effectively. Within a deep approach, there's also the metacognitive dispositions around that particular subject area. So those metacognitive dispositions will reflect the student's ability to identify and utilise those resources efficiently and effectively to meet the needs of a particular task embedded within that disciplinary context. They can do that through a deep understanding. So with a deep understanding, an individual can take that information, manipulate it, use it and change it according to their needs. They can adapt it to new contexts as they come along. And through that, they can come to new understandings about that discipline within that broader scope of their learning. Evans in 2013 identified some characteristics of a deep approach which were focusing on meaning making, understanding the information around that discipline, understanding the concepts of that subject and applying those to making effective interpretations of that environment. There's having self-management skills, which is the ability to fit yourself within that discipline and understand the requirements placed upon you. There's perspective within the discipline, seeing what the different nuances of that discipline are. There's noticing details and noticing nuances that you might not have properly realised if you weren't fully immersed in that discipline. There's resilience, so you can understand the requirements of the discipline and through that you've got a bit more survivability within that discipline. And the characteristic of a deep approach is being able to manage your personal response to feedback that happens within that disciplinary environment. You can be proactive in feedback seeking behaviour, so you're actively trying to get responses, trying to get feedback from those more experienced peers around you, and you're adaptable and forward thinking within your activities within the disciplinary context. Within a deep approach, there's also distinct elements 
comprising thinking dispositions within a discipline. Those are sensitivity, inclination towards the discipline, and ability within the, that, that discipline. That sensitivity is the gateway to mindfulness about that particular discipline. So a mindful state is where there's openness to new information and different points of view that might come through uh, being as part of that discipline. A mindless state is the opposite of that, a rigid reliance on things you believe you already know, old categories or old distinctions that have been created in the past and you feel are set in stone and cannot be changed. So that sensitivity to the nuances within the discipline can help you think in a more open way, a more mindful way. So those are some key things to think about when considering what a deep approach within a particular discipline might look like.